Competency models attempt to define every job in an organisation. In theory, it's a great idea. Hey, let's write down the tasks needed in every role. Then we can use it for recruitment, training, assessment, and it'll help everyone plan their careers. Great theory. And maybe there are industries where there is a set number of jobs consisting of definable tasks which don't change. Maybe airlines, where checking people in is a defined set of tasks. Or banks, where serving customers can be reduced to a rigid set of operations. Hmm, maybe that's why those roles are now being done by machines. Because when work is based on projects or cases, you find that everyone is doing a unique job, which is changing all the time. Trying to define those jobs in detailed, tangible terms is like trying to stop the tide by nailing the water to the beach. I've seen firms invest huge effort in Byzantine documents or complicated web-based tools that are supposed to make everything marvellous. But they either end up in obscurity, as people find them confusing and useless, or a bureaucratic industry develops to fit the reality to the model. Sometimes the definitions become meaninglessly abstract, such as recognised by stakeholders as proactive ambassadors for championing the principles of... Principles of something or other. Vague competences like this give plenty of scope for saying that my favourites, or those who speak or look like me, tick all the boxes, while those less familiar to me are not quite there yet. Paraded as objective, the competency framework creates ideal conditions for bias. We all have to work against our biases, managers most of all. So let's resist competency models that allow bias, favouritism and subjectivity to be dressed up as something impersonal and objective. Does this mean the emperor has no clothes and that competency models are useless? Well, no, not if you're in a line of work which suits having a competency model. One will be useful if, one, you know exactly what you want to use it for, recruitment or assessment, say, and you're clear on what the competency model can contribute and what it can't. Two, you have large numbers of people doing similar jobs to make the investment worthwhile, but recognise that people doing unique roles, specialists and support staff won't fit that bill, and you'd be silly to create competency models for them. Three, you can define these jobs in terms of tangible tasks or outputs. Four, you keep it simple. And five, you support it with broader management training. No competency model is going to help you if your managers don't know how to do the people aspects of their job. There are such situations where a competency model can have value. Uh, hospital technicians, for example, will find it useful to have a list of all the repairs and maintenance they need to do on each piece of equipment they look after. But if not, then a competency framework is not for you. History is full of ideas which work brilliantly in some situations, which are then assumed to be right in all situations, but which cause no end of problems when forced into circumstances that just aren't right for them. Instead, create something that describes the general level of responsibility at different grades. Everyone who's succeeding at their current grade becomes a role model and a standard for that grade. Compare the value and accountability of real people doing different jobs. Management means the use of judgment. It's not going to be perfectly objective, but subjectivity dressed up as objectivity is worse. <laughs>